All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to Mog Monday, the show where we play goblins every single Monday. However, this is a special Monday. This is the well, it's not the first Monday of the month. Usually, we do Mog Monday every first Monday of the of the month. Uh, it's Mog Monday Showdown, where I challenge other content creator to a duel. But unfortunately, yeah, the first Monday of the month was uh, conspicuous. Snoop is currently banned Monday, and uh, so second Monday of the month, here we are. And I've got Aspiring Spike here on the line, ready for the showdown. Aspiring Spike, are you there? I am here and ready to go. Excellent. And we, we're going to have a pretty interesting Mog Monday showdown this week, because, or this month, because Modern Rising 2 just came out. And it's actually worked out like perfectly, where I was planning on challenging Aspiring Spike anyway. And my plan was, usually play three different formats on the Mog Monday showdown, but I wanted to do Modern, Modern, Modern. So Aspiring Spike's... One of the best modern streamers out there right now, brewing like crazy. And I wanted to do my three different modern goblin decks versus Spike's three modern brews. And of course, it just happened to work out that Modern Horizons 2 came out, which is perfect. So, Spiring Spike, tell us about your, a little bit about yourself. You've been like the premier modern streamer now for a while. You're always building up awesome decks. You're crushing. Uh, talk to us. I mean, talk to us a little bit about, about you and modern and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, I am, I guess, a washed up paper grinder turned to MTGO user Aspiring Spike and have kind of developed a, a love for trying to brew and innovate and try to find like competitive underexplored strategies in modern. And that's all I do is make decks and that I, I think have a chance to be competitive with some new ideas. And uh, that's my full time gig. Washed up paper boomer, you say? I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to be playing three matches of Modern today. And um, I have th my three different Goblin decks. I have not looked at Spike's decks. You know, I told, told, told Spike basically just to bring the three brews he thinks are his most brewy, most, you know, his his decks. Because Spike's been going nuts. I mean, like, the last, like, year, I feel like, it's just like, oh, it's a new Spike deck. It's sort of like, you're like the crow keys of, of boomers, basically. You know, where it's like, oh, what's Spike's playing today? What's Spike playing today? So, I've actually played one of your Goblin decks here on Mog Monday, like a while back. You, you built the Pyre deck when Pyre of Heroes came out. And it's like, I played an Aspire Spike deck on Mog Monday, which is pretty cool. So, I have my three Goblin decks. I've not seen Spike's th three brews. And normally we do it uh, Player's Champ style. So, it's by, it's by format. So, you, we would choose the format and so on. Obviously, there's only one deck for each format. Because we're doing all modern today, I have assigned uh, each of my decks a number, one, two, and three. Uh, Spike, you've, you've done the same, right? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, so we're going to randomly choose a deck versus a deck. So we're not metagaming like my deck versus Spike's deck. And again, I haven't really seen Spike's decks uh, as far as what he, uh, he's playing exactly today. So let's get after old, our co-host Siri here. And uh, Spike, why don't you pick heads or tails for me? I'm sorry, I missed it, was it? I think you're on, on push yeah. talk. I, I, I'm i pushing. I'm pushing. Oh, sorry. I couldn't hear. Was it Tails? Yeah, Tails. Tails, all right. Tails, Tails. Siri, please flip a coin. Uh, What? Siri, hello. Siri, please flip a coin. It's like trying to open up like a, a, a music app or something. One more time, Siri. Come on, you're really, really, you're killing me here. <laughs> Siri, flip a coin. It's tails. It is tails. All right, you chose tails. Woo! Right? So you'll, yeah, you'll be playing tails. first, and then um, okay. I guess we'll just pick random numbers. Um, I guess just have your chat pick a random number, and then I'll have my chat pick a random number one to three, and then we'll just okay. choose a deck like that. I think it's you know that's fine. And then um, we're gonna fire up match number one here, and um, again three matches. Uh, one match with each deck, best of three matches, and we'll play all three no matter what, if it's a, whether it's a sweep or not. And um, chat, start yelling out your numbers, and let's get going. Y'all ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. All right, cool. Why don't you send me, um, I'm Jim Downside on Magic Online. You can send me a challenge with the, with the deck you choose. I'm going to run my little intro ad, and then we'll get good to go. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, let's go. All right, so. We're going to, nope. Wouldn't be Mog Monday if I accidentally triggered the if I didn't accidentally trigger the uh, the theme song for the hundredth time. Looks like we got a lot of threes in chat, so we'll do number three. So we're gonna start with deck number three, which is our most spicy deck. It's our most spicy spicy deck. It is the uh, the sacrifice deck. Uh, I played a deck similar to this on on Mog Monday previously, and uh, no vials, 
Very, very sacrifice focused. We have Goblin Bombardment, which is really cool. Not going to go over the deck too much. We're going to jump right into the match and see what we can do here. So we have match number one. Round one versus Spiring Spike. And again, you won the flip, so you'll be going first, correct? Uh, well, it says I, I lost the die roll on the match I created. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just choose. I'll just choose draw because you you won oh, the, okay. the series. Yeah, I okay. I'll choose to be on the play then. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Good luck. Good luck to you too. All right. So choosing not to go first. And all right, let's go. Match one. I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna cast my first ignoble hierarch. Of course. Of course. Of course, you're playing Luris. Why wouldn't you be playing Luris? Which means you can be playing literally any number of the colors. I actually uh, subscribe to MTGO Premium, which allows you to put Luris into your hand. It's actually a new pay-to-win model. I see that you haven't uh, bought that level of service yet, but it's it's well worth it. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I'll have to do a little Google searching on that one and see if uh, I fit that one to my budget here on Monday. All right, so we're about to cast our first ignoble hierarch, which is dope. Um, we're gonna keep this. Mo Monday. Sai resub, come on, keep. Let's go. We also had a Midnight Shyamalan resub and uh, a Mordo resub. Mrs. Bobble. All right. Name a more iconic duo than Mrs. Bobble and Luris. And we've got Monkey. Monkey business. Now we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit with this monkey. This feels almost like reverse goblins, where it's like you have the goblin lackey and you're not playing goblins. Like, cause I don't have an answer for it on turn one. It's pretty funny. I'm playing goblins. I'm gonna steal all the goblins from you with Ragavan. Yeah, we can't have that on Mug Monday. All right, so we're gonna play our first ignoble hierarch. This isn't that bad. We'll take one hit from the Ragavan, and then we'll be able to expert to kill it. Hopefully, Ragavan hits a land here. Pretty high variance card as far as like the the first hit. It's gonna hit. A Mog War Marshal. That's a good one, too. And it was going to cost a look. Wow. That's fine, though. So we have on Earth to get back to the expert, so. Rock it out, Jim. We STI won a Poe for your Y-ing record. Uh, mods can do that if they can do that. I can't handle doing that and everything else, so. If a mod can do that, that'd be awesome. Took me on Earth. Interesting. There's a second discard spell here, maybe? Even casting Matron into the Ragavan's fine, too. All right, making a red. Unbelievable. Casting Mog War Marshal against me on uh, on Mog Monday. All right, so we're going to... Uh, we're just going to... Oh, yeah, Voidwalker first would have been... Oh, sorry, push to talk. No worries. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're just going to... We're just going to expert tap land here, I think. Again, um, we could... Yeah, isn't it? we could like matron here and like try and set up a block. But we, I, I just want to kill this and not let them get any more card advantage off it. A one drop that gets card advantage is pretty freaking ridiculous. So let's uh let's just play expert. I ain't no expert. I'm just hurt. Shoot that one down. Very reset. Thanks so much. Ignoble Ararch is my spirit animal. Sweet. All right, and we're going to uh yes that this so. And this is our sacrifice deck. decks. So we have, like, Goblin Bombardment. We have, like, a lot more, uh... We only have, like, two Matrons, no Vials. We have, uh... Two Patriarchs biddings in here, which is pretty sweet. So... Yeah, Snake it for one. It's not a problem. A monkey. Let me tell you about that monkey. Why could this card have been a Goblin? You know? That would have been insane. That would have been totally insane. Alright. A Tarmogoyf, 4-5. All right, and we draw an unclaimed territory. Now we have four mana available. Probably just Sling Gang here. And next turn we can Matron Marshal. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't know if you, you knew this or not, but on, on Mog Monday, we pay Echo on our Mog War Marshals. Thank you very much. You're really, di you're really uh, dispiriting the Mog Monday spirit. Yeah, it's just, uh, just a little bit of disrespect. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. The highest form. <laughs> All right, so we're going to fire off our, our Sling Gang. We can fire in for some blocks here. And uh, we've got Matron War Marshal. We do have a Ringwaiter in our deck for, uh, for grindy situations like this. We have two Patriarch Spittings in our deck, which is freaking awesome. Uh, it's obviously very, very cool with Sling Gang Lieutenant. Dothy Voidwalker, which is fine. And we'll see uh, an attack here, also fine. And... 
I'm just block with this. Sack it. Taking a chip shot here or two is not a big deal. We got Matrix for Ringleader, most likely. And a Inquisition of Kozlik. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, taking our Matron here, most likely. Voidwalker overrated, absolutely. Now the Matron. It's got Knuckleball. A little Knuckleball action. That's pretty nice. All right, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to lay it out here, and this thing can't even block, so we get to fire. And I don't know if, no, if Spike should attack with all three of these, because now I get to attack, I get a free attack for three. Um, we're going to play this name Goblin. We're just going to play it all. We're just going to play it all. Knuckleball. Play Marshall. We're going to send. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this game, I'm not going to lie. Got 13 to 16. In the hospital for your baby's birth? Glenn, that's awesome. Congrats. That's great. All right, so here comes Dorothy Voidwalker. I'm thinking in for three. And we're going to untap, and we're going to pay Echo. I'll pay the Echo. Always pay the echo. Always pay the echo. Five months. Just Five months. another Mo Monday. Okay, and now we're gonna see what's up here. Cole against command to discard a card and deal two damage to No us. munitions expert on time, please. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that was that was good. That was good. You um, got me. I, you right. totally got me. All right, so we're going to uh, see 13. They have two cards in hand. What do we want? I want to get a sack here. Knuckleball can get in. You know, Knuckleball can grow up to be pretty big here. And we can deal a lot of damage as well. I guess the Voidwalker exiles the Marshal, which is pretty annoying. Um, so we got to figure out how much you want to sacrifice. Oh, wait. That screws up that, too. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. It is, uh, this is a death trigger, not a leave, leave play trigger. Sure. I don't know if it or dies. So, I think we're just sacking the lieutenant, then. Yeah, Boybucker's pretty annoying against us, honestly. Because we are kind of like a graveyard sacrifice sacrifice -y deck. Um, we have plenty of ways to kill it, but... Alright, so we're just going to sack this. Call it a day. And, uh, just going to pass the turn. Discard that. Server it dies. Oh, what's up, Todd? Tandy. Marty, resub. Um, if I were to be put into an owner's graveyard from anywhere, so does it, does it still die? I'm sorry, so just a, a rules question. So with Voidwalker, does the death trigger still happen? I so my chat is saying no, but I'm thinking that because the goblin tokens aren't cards, they should happen. Yeah. So so it should. Yeah. It, it's like Leyline of the Void, I guess. Right. So yeah. It with tokens. Because I remember like back in the day with Leyline, you would use you could sign yeah, a token yeah, and get yeah, yeah. below under mm. Leyline. Yeah. That's, that's that's my impression too. That sacking the goblin or goblin token dying is are going to trigger the uh, Necrobone Witch. Okay. All right. We're Okay. All right, so uh, we'll just go here. That change in Ikoria. Tokens, tokens go to the graveyard, but obviously this, this stops things from going to the graveyard, but this stops cards from going to the graveyard. So they're going to they're gonna play my Sling Gang. So I'm going to play my... Uh, you wanted to play Goblins. You could have just played Goblins, you know? I didn't know that that was allowed, so I just, just decided to steal your deck. All right, so they have their own sling gang, which is fine, because now the Voidwalker's gone. There's another one, sure. So, and now the Goyf probably gets in. It's a really awkward game. So we're blocking with the Goblin here. We're not, we can't take his damage because of the uh, thing in play, so we'll block here. Now we can safely attack with um, Knuckleball. 
So I just block like this. Yo, always yes. You know, nice draw here. You know, nice draw. That's an anti hobble, of course. So we can get in for four with our knuckleball. All right, so we're not in like great shape here. I mean, from the just from the very first turn of the Ragavan hit, like Ragavan just so good on the play, where like if the if we had been on the play this game and the Ragavan didn't hit, like that one Ragavan hit giving them the one Mogwar Marshal just like really spun things out of control, um, which is kind of annoying. Voidwalkers are pretty annoying too, honestly. It just like happens to line up well against our cards. It also just lines up well against this particular deck. My other goblin decks are not as as graveyard sacrifice focused. I should play the land, I guess. Um, and this one is, so Voidwalker's like pretty good here. All right, so we got a nine. Crox is gone. Looking for a, looking for a good something here. Yeah, imagine that Goyf is getting in too. All right, so we gotta block the Goyf. Hmm. So I need to draw a spell here. That's a Bloodstain Mire. All right, looks like we're dead. Uh, we're dead on board. So tough first game there. Tough first game. Uh, of course, losing a die roll to the Ragavan, which which hit wouldn't have hit on the wouldn't have hit on the draw, and then. Uh, the Voidwalker being good against all of our kind of like graveyard centric cards like Knucklebone Witch, uh, pretty annoying. Uh, tough first game, tough first game. So like Jundi Luracy stuff. We're with these ringleaders. If I want the Tarfire, um, Niles. It's, it's also sucks because of this deck. Most of my Goblin decks play Relic, um, and Relic's standing against Tarmogoyf. But because we're playing Bidding and because we're playing Unearth. We're playing Niles Ball Bomb instead, which is like much, much worse. But I'm gonna bring the ringleaders. What are we gonna take out here? I have to say the unearth is like pretty sketch. I'm not sure how many Voidwalkers Spike's playing over there, but bidding bidding would like normally be very good if it wasn't for uh, like like a lot of Voidwalkers, if that is the case. Um you should get like a prospector or two. I guess there's no Plague Engineers coming in, right? Because uh, they have Lurus. Honestly, my name wants Starfire. Like, this is 23 lands. Maybe we can shave a land, too, honestly. Starfire kills Monkey. Um, it does kill Lurus, too. Yeah, Push does. Push can kill Tarm. Push can kind of, kind of just kill everything. It's not a Goblin, of course, but... I kind of don't mind shaving a land here. Um... Just like a thought seize deck, just want to make sure we draw enough gas. Uh, so let's shave like, we'll shave a territory, and then bring in. Let me bring in the tar fire. Skills void blocker too, and then do I want pushes for the? I don't think the. I don't think Glaive is good against us though. I was like, you said something so many blockers and stuff. I think this is fine. We're on the play too, so I think I think this is fine. Let's try this out. Let's try this out. Alright, it's on the play. And Lur is still there, which is good news for us. Hand is not great. I mean... Do a bombardment with some lands, some war boss. I'm just going to keep. It's kind of a loose keep, but bombardment plus boss is pretty sweet. We're probably getting discard spelled anyway, and like Mulliganing is batting, it's a discard spell anyway, so I'm just gonna keep. You folks just tuning in, this is the Mod Monday Showdown. Usually the first month, first Monday of the month, but once a month I do uh, I do a Mod Monday Showdown versus another content creator. Today is Aspiring Spike, and you were doing all modern today. Usually the Mod Monday Showdown is multiple formats, but of course Aspiring Spike, the modern maestro. And uh, also in celebration of Modern Horizons 2, we are doing a showdown that is... No Veil of Summer, no Veil of Summer, no Veil of Summer, no Veil of Summer. You are correct. Veil of Summer is a nice one. I actually forgot about that card. I don't think that card's like good against good and good and goblins, though. 
The bombardment. <laughs> the old Thoughtseize bug. Yep, the old Scribers. I mean, Scotty's bug never gets, never doesn't get you. All right, so bombardment is here. Tarmoglyph is here. Uh, so we can start uh, start the war, war boss chain up. Prospector. Yuck, 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 yuck. All right, so war boss, make a token, attack. All right, bombardment away. What's up, green? This card spell, sure. Can't take the ringleader, so we draw a lamb. It's great. Um, maybe a way to kill war boss here also would be kind of annoying, but Thoughtseize, jeez. Take it easy. Take it easy. Four or five, Tarmogoy, if you're gonna stay home. <laughs> I guess you do have empty Geo Premium. I was lying, I did sign up for it last night. <laughs> Alright, so uh send these in. The one that isn't blocked will uh one's block will sacrifice. And send that in. So now the ball is rolling on the tokens because we're now ahead on tokens. We're just dying every time, which is great. Loris to hand. Okay, this hand's, this game's feeling pretty good for us. I'm not going to lie. This game's feeling pretty good. 15 points of life for our opponent. Anti's hovel in the chamber. Uh, yeah, we're just jamming here. I mean, we just tag with all three, th all three tokens. We're not ready to do more than that yet. So All right, so deal one, deal one more, play pros. I uh, whatever, sure. I could put that differently. Could play land on tap. Doesn't actually matter. So feeling pretty good here. Feeling pretty good. The old bombardment, pretty awesome new addition to the format from Modern Horizons. It's a fancy swamp. All right, so you have a, a naked Lurus, Lurus with no friends, and we have a Voidwalker, which is totally fine. And Voidwalker can't block. Now Lurus can block, but of course we can sacrifice whatever they block to it. Um, tar fire off the top. It's pretty good too. Um, pop that off here. I guess this is gonna give them a, a a shock off Voidwalker if they want it. But I can just like kill the Voidwalker whatever they block with. So they're at eleven. I'm gonna send in everything. Send the war bosses also. They block a war boss. It's two, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're just dead, right? Yeah. So stack with everything. They block war boss. We stack the war boss. They take two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's super dead. Counter here. Counter here. All right. All right. All right. Better lucky than good, as they say in the business. All right. So now we're on. Uh, now we're on the draw. So I'm a little more interested in playing, bringing the fatal pushes. Uh, we're playing war boss off a of master because Ralph master making all of your goblins have to attack is a very, very big problem. Uh, Goblins is more of a blocking deck than an attacking deck, so you don't want to be able to do that. All right, so we got to bring in. I want to bring in these pushes now. I think I do think I want to be uh, able to deal with stuff more on the draw because we're not going to be able to. I also want to be able to deal with Ragged Band too on the draw, which is really annoying. I'm gonna go another Prospector, just like not very exciting. And then I might just cut the Matron too. Bidding Matron and Siege Gangs like. I don't know. I mean, Prospectors is like pretty bad. I just cut all the Prospectors. Like, they're just like not very good. Um, all right, so let's roll. Let's roll. Drop a Mons. Nah, Mons is great. They're gonna have Sling Gangs. A little high on Barman Legal. Sling Gang is really, really good. And Sling Gang plays well with with Patrick Mons. Plays well with uh, with um, with bidding, of course. Hey, <laughs> that's and and. Uh, Okay, sure, keep this. What do we ship here? I think we just ship a land. Our hand's pretty weak to discard, but bidding's a nice thing to build up to. This would be a real nice seven. Oh boy. Um, this is kind of like paper magic where I can see all your facial expressions and I know that maybe you don't have that good of a hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually covered up your your webcam just for that for that purpose. I, I didn't want to try it, like be looking at you. It's also if you're talking to chat and stuff too. But yeah, it, this would be a, this would be a dope seven. This would be a dope seven. 
But, uh, that's a six. Ugh. Um. What are we putting back here? What are we putting back? Is putting back Ignoble Hierarch crazy? Given that, like, we're gonna get Thoughtseize probably. We just wanna keep all of our gas and all of our lands, and Ignoble Hierarch can just get killed. It does make our hand real slow, though. It does make our hand real slow. We're on the draw. I'm just gonna pitch a land. And I might as well pitch Stomping Ground because Stat Cavern Souls is the same thing, so. No, we're gonna keep bidding. I wanna keep bidding in my hand. Bidding is a nice, uh. A nice, uh. Nice end game to play for, play for so. Alright, we, we drew a land, which is cool. Goblin. Fellow Chucker, eh? Sensing some real goblin envy over there. Yeah, uh, maybe this is Mog Monday. You know, maybe this is also a goblin deck after all. Oof, took my thing too, jeez. All right. Of course, that makes our bidding look really stupid, but sure. So, Bolt the Noble. Kozlik, sure. I think it's War Boss here. Another Voidwalker, sure. Get in for four. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, I didn't did not think that this was a patriarch spitting. Oh no! How many? Still think it's like not great for us though. Um, obviously, our bidding is nullified by the walkers. I gotta be bored with the bidding. Seven bored months on Poibly, the most hyped Mo Monday. Mo Let's Monday. go. Alright, so bidding is gone, not really a problem. They're gonna play my What? You play the bidding? That's pretty cool. So this one hurts extra hard because I've poo pooed the card Dothy Voidwalker a lot. And like it just it happens to line up pretty well against like this particular goblin deck with all like the sacrificey stuff and the graveyardy stuff. So now I'm yeah, losing, I, now I'm losing I, to it horribly. <laughs> I, I agree that Voidwalker is pretty overhyped. Uh, I'm just kind of been main decking them with all the food decks around, but this is it is funny that this was the Voidwalker matchup today. Yeah, for sure. It, it just it just karma for me like dogging on the card for the last like week and a half. Everyone's like, "You're dude, that card's really good." And I'm like, "No, I don't think it's like that good. It's like good against like like certain things, but in a vacuum, it's like just fine. You know, it's, it's not like amazing." Yeah, I, I I absolutely agree with you. All right, so uh, I don't think Ringleader can get us out of this one, honestly. Play Ringleader. Big hits. Pashik Mons. All right, that's not bad, actually. And then we're going to see. Go. It's tough because, like, I'm like not sure how many Voidwalkers you're on. And, like, bidding is, like, normally really good in a matchup like this. But specifically bad against Voidwalkers. I wasn't sure if I should leave, it in, leave them in or cut them. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it makes sense to leave a minute in a matchup like this. You can also, like, kill the Voidwalkers pretty easily with Expert and stuff. Yeah, I have a decent amount of removal, so... Alright, losing my own war bosses here. We got a big dash coming. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're just pretty dead here. Honestly, uh, more stuff? Jeez. Jeez. It's crazy that I get to play Legion Warboss in my Lura stack. It's kind of broken. Cheating. It's cheating. So, yeah. So, the absolute worst part about that loss is that now on YouTube, the comments are going to be like, See, Voidwalker's so insane. You're an idiot, Jim. Ha ha, you're so stupid. <laughs> so any any thoughts on that matchup there? Uh, you can um actually and say that I also don't think Voidwalker's that good. Uh, the matchup good. seems interesting. I feel like you're probably favored of the matchup where you have so many blockers for Ragavan and then Goblin Bombardment kills a lot of my creatures too. 
Uh, Patriarch's bidding seems like a really insane top deck in like the late game, but uh, winning the die roll seemed really big too. Where I was able to you know get in with the monkey game one. Yeah, the, the the, yeah. the die roll the die roll game one was, was absolutely huge. So I had like an expert in my hand. I had the matron to block it too. So like the and then just that first ragavan hit of just like also getting a good two drop was like pretty wild. And then Marshall like gums the board up, and now like you have your own resources to kind of block and trade with and stuff too. So yeah. Um, yeah, all right, let's let's move on to, next, to our next match here. So have your chat yell out one or two. My chat will do the same. And we'll uh, see if I can get on the board here on Mog Monday Showdown. Let's go. Okay, sounds good. Chat, yell out, yell out names. So I'm a little sad our, our super cool deck, our super cool uh, sacrifice deck kind of ran to a, a tough little matchup there. But um, that's okay. Our other, two, our, other, our other two decks are a little more basic. We have uh, just straight Boomer Goblins. And we have uh, and we have the straight more straightforward combo goblins. We're seeing a lot of twos in chat, so we're gonna let up two. All right, chat's chosen two. I'm all ready to go. Good luck. Good luck to you too. All right, so match number two. We got some uh, some combo goblins. So you were on the play for this one, right? Ah, uh, yes. Ninja Day reset. Thanks so much, King. Reset. Thanks so much. Just another Mog Monday. All right, so. Gigantha. That's not a Lurus. This is this one's more of a acquaintance than a companion. <laughs> Just kind of hanging out. Basically, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll come with you, sure. A party needs another people, another person or two. We'll, we'll invite you two. All right, so we got okay hand here. It's okay. Little goblin. Little goblin boy. If you want to give your bucks to make a goblin deck, what format would be best in? I don't understand your question, XC. What do you, what do you mean? Soul Scar Mage. Soul Scar Mage. And we draw Kiki Cheeky. Uh, Alright. So now we get the, the Lava Dart matchup. It's not cool. It's not cool. Alright, what's Marshall? And Hierarch. And say go. Alright, so here comes Soul Scar Mage. We're just going to block. Um, this is fine. Don't think we're paying Echo this time. So we can actually like Kiki Jiki here. It's pretty wild. But like, I think it's Target currently. We can just Harbinger for like a like a, a ringleader, I guess. Lightning Bolt targeting me. Light up the stage, sure. Reveals Dragon Rage Channeler, Fiery Islet, sure. Another Marshall, so we can Marshall Harbinger. And I guess we'll just get like ringleader. I mean, we can get like a actually we can actually just get um get an expert and then try and set up expert Kiki, which is pretty good too. So Goblin. So we'll send in for three here with our hierarchs, which is kind of cool. Don't get to do that in goblins very often. Then we get to uh, play Marshall, 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 Marshall. Then we get to play Boggart. And what are we going to get here? So Expert is reasonable. I mean, getting a Sling Gang is like a lot of damage. Um, though it is soft like a rule spell or lava dart things like that expert just killing like dragon rage channeler or soul scar feels pretty good too um so i feel like it's like expert or sling gang i think ringleader is like also in the equation uh we currently have five mana um given how wide we are i could also just get matron decide next turn and then we can just matron and things if they, if they kill a, a hierarch there that's pretty bad though so I think you're just expert. If I get ringleader and they, you kill know, you me, can uh, fail to find, right? I'm not seeing many goblins in here. I'm, I'm, I'm worried I might not find one. I think we're gonna get expert. I get expert. So I go. The problem is that if one lava dart kills both hierarchs, and now I can't cast sling gang or ringleader, so I think we're just gonna get the card we can guaranteed cast. We're way ahead on the board right now, so 
Maximize velocity. Gotta go fast. Discarding a land. So now it's sorcery, instant, land. One red for what? I'll discard arc light to velocity. That's cute. That's cute. All right, so. Wait, there wasn't enough spells for arc light Phoenix? I guess it wasn't. All right, sure. So get it for five, not a big deal. And then uh, we are going to pay our echo. We know we're drawing a two drop, which is fine. So pay a red and a colorless, that's fine. Untap and draw expert. We're gonna jam with the world here, I think. And then expert down the channeler. They've got three cards left in hand. Should I leave a blocker back? I think I should leave the war marshal back. To, I guess the expert is back to block, which is reasonable. So we're gonna just jam. Yeah, I'm just gonna jam. I love paying Echo. Paying Echo is the best thing you can do. Nothing, nothing, nothing better than nothing better than playing Echo. And we're gonna we're gonna kill this. So whenever they cast a non creature spell, they surveil. So I'm gonna do this now, so they can't surveil. Take this punk out. Let's go. Just another Mog Monday. Looking again on the board here on Mog Monday. We are down a match. I I, I put the match count wrong. No one said anything. I'm cheating. <laughs> I lied. I put, the, I put the wrong one on. I was doing it while I was talking. There we go. All right. Combat is here. Soul Scar is coming in. Uh, we are blocking. Uh, we are blocking. Don't want to turn a light up the stage. I don't want to take any more damage at all and get cheesed out. So. Raid Channeler. Sure. Another land. And three mana for a hard cast light up stage. Good block, Jim. Good block. And now if we draw a land, we can we can uh, Kiki Expert, which is awesome. And if not, we draw a spell, we're happy too. So that's great. So been a salvager. Hit light up stage. Light up stage hits Lava Dart, Soul Scar Mage. Lava Dart's pretty good against us. Um, that's a land. That's a land. Doing it the old-fashioned way. Kiki 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 kill this yes attack step two you want to leave the marshal back to the block there's a, actually there's a, there's a lava dart available but let's leave back two things to block it's one card in hand a soul scar mage and a lava dart it's also a uh what's it called a oh it's jump starter never mind it's gone um but Lavadar can kill two blockers. I don't want to get cheesed out. So I'm going to leave that one extra blocker. I'm going to play it super safe. I'm a coward. All right, so Lavadar targeting me. So might have a light up stage here, I guess. All right, here we go. Revealing Arclight Mountain. That's why I'm not really big on Arclight Phoenix and Light Up a Stage decks. A lot of really awkward uh, awkward turns you can have there. Crack the Canopy and Concede. Nope, not conceding. Fight to the last. All right, there it is. Got game one, got game one. So uh, an Arclight Phoenix Prowessy deck. So we're going to want these pushes. We're going to want Tar Fire. Now, I guess Relic's actually really good because they have the Dragon's Rage Channeler, too. Uh, yeah, not not the main plan there. I'm just playing 1-1s one and hard casting Kiki Jiki, but it plays. It plays. Shape of Ringleader. Now, unfortunately, Lava Dart is, like, pretty good against us. Um, I'm also not exactly sure how many... How many, uh, how many Relics we want. It is good against Arclight and Dragon Rage Channeler, but we also need to contain the Prowess creatures, too. Uh, Snoop Marshall. I guess War Chief isn't like great against them, and also just like lowering our our Goblin. I guess we only have one Ringleader. So, how good is Fury? How good is Fury? I'm not sure Fury is even that good, honestly. 
I mean, it's all right. I mean, it's all right. It's like, we have a lot of other cards to bring. It's just more important to, like, deal with the stuff cheaply. And, like, I don't know. I don't want to 2 for myself to kill a freaking, like, Soul Scar Mage. And then if they have two Prowess creatures in play and they can Prowess once, I can't kill two of them. So I don't think I want Fury. I don't think I want Fury. Um, I got these two. Kinky Slinging. I think like it's going to be hard to combo against them. Maybe I could Shave a Harbinger. Yeah, Lava Dart's like they're really scary. Can I save Escape Precaution? I just like, shave all the cards that are bad against Lava Dart, honestly. I'm not going to shave Hierarchs. It's just like too... It's just too good. But... For 22 lands. Relic and Cycle, of course. Maybe go down like a Warchief and a Harbinger and we keep like the backdoor combo, but... That makes Kiki worse too, though. Hmm. Let's use... I'm not sure what, what they're bringing in, honestly. Don't know what kind of like... I mean, they might have like Kozlux Return or something like that, which would be pretty disgusting. That's pretty good against this. Yeah, I'll just have a Harbinger and a Warchief, I guess. I'm a little scared of the card Kozlux Return, I'm not going to lie. But I'm not exactly sure what we can do about it, so... We could also like just cut a Kiki and leave, put a second Ringleader back in. But we kind of cut our Goblin Count down, too. Let's just try this. Not exactly sure, honestly. The relics are a little weird. Normally, we would bring a relic against like a prowess deck, but between Dragon Rage Channeler and Arclight Phoenix, it feels like pretty reasonable. Realwalker is just a worse snoop, right? Like, all right, so there's Gigantha again. We have Tarfire, Fatal Push. We have a Fine Hand. We have answers to the first two creatures. We have a Blocker, Vicious Bobble. All right, Mountain. Mountain go. Interesting. So, Andy's Hobble. So, we're just going to play Foothills and say go. The ability to dart, I mean, uh, tar fire push if you want to. Land guards. This is going to be that end step, like, card draw spell. Like, draw, discard, whatever card. Uh, I think it's Stomping Ground. So, this is more like an Arclight Phoenix -y game, probably. We draw Kiki. It's a little weird. I've also drawn our one Harbinger, which is kind of weird too, but... Alright, so we're going to uh, hobble Marshall here, which is fine. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Is Karn back from Clown College? No, Karn's been at being Clown College for the next five, five months. Five, five months. Five weeks. I wish five months. Five weeks. Karn, uh, we get to go train with him in like a week. Double Phoenix, you animal. A Channeler, okay. And Lava Dart. Just gonna hit me too. Alright, so. That's pretty good. So they get double Phoenix back. This is kinda like, man, they have a light up stage. Just to say they're, they're kind of out of gas, but light up stage is pretty sick. Bolt Canyon. Alright, so pretty good draw here. Pretty good draw. Turn three. Um, we are not going to pay the Echo this time. Um. So we can tar fire one phoenix and push the channeler. And uh, we're definitely going to do that. So I'll play this. Get a tap land. Uh, yes. Yeah, so they've got two cards in hand and a lava dart in the bin. So returning phoenix isn't that difficult, honestly. We might be, we should be in trouble this game, honestly. They have bolt. Double Phoenix. Didn't pay the uh, Echo there. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I know. It's a sad day when I'm not paying Echo. Bolt me. Light up the stage. Somebody light up the stage. Jeez. Suspear Scalding Tarn. That's pretty good, too. So two cards in hand. Still has a dart in the bin, also. Gonna go for the dart here. Yes, yes, yes. And a bolt too. Animal. Animal. Am I dead? Probably dead, right? Yeah, alright. Alright. Good hand. Good hand. Good hand, I guess. Um That's a pretty pretty good hand. Had double light up a stage, double double phoenix. It's pretty good. Double bolt. Um so 
do we want Fury? I don't think we want Fury. Or else they can get our ringleaders, too. So, like, the Fury's, like, it's going to be hard to fuel them. Um, yeah, we're definitely the control deck here, but maybe we just, like, take out Kiki for another ringleader. I'm just like, we have, like, the combo in, but, like, we're not really, like, stat focused on it. Um, hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's fun. Run it back. Run it back. Fury is still good. Like, Pyrokinesis is still good. It's not so much worse as Sorcery, but it's not bad to hard cast either. Right, on the play. On the play. Uh, it's an okay hand. It's definitely not great, but we can keep it. Not thrilled. Honestly, like... We just have Marshall on the play, though. We can't mulligan this hand. We're going to keep. I'm a little worried. This hand is soft some stuff, but I just can't mulligan a Marshall on the play. On the draw, I think I'd mulligan this. We have no we have no removal spells, no relics, but... Um, maybe I should actually play Hobble untapped and, like, bluff to push or, or bolt something like that. Or Tarfire. I don't know. Alright, land is not what we want to draw there. Land is no good. Mo, mo, mo. MK, reset, thanks so much. Would Flur Fury be too good as a flash creature? Yeah, probably. Right, so they, have, they have another arc light draw here, it looks like. Nope. Sis Spear. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Coward. 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 Just try just trying to incentivize you to pay Echo. Yeah? Okay. If it's if it's a <laughs> if it's a, a little hook for that, then sure. Do the right thing. Alright. And you can't pay Echo again, unfortunately. Oh, I misclicked. Oh no. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Alright, so um Wasted my attack for nothing. Alright, so we're gonna um We have War Chief or Push here. I don't think I wanna push yet. And, like, if I play War Chief, it's probably going to die. But I think I want Snoop more anyway, so. Let's play War Chief. Let's say go. That's the Bolt, I guess, right? I don't know. I guess, they, I guess uh, there's a new card, too, a Delirium card, but. Kill the War Chief, it's fine. Not a problem. So. Alright, Metamorphose here. Only Holy Heat does seem pretty good. Soul Scar Mage. And get in for two. This is fine. I'll take two here. I'm pretty incentivized to like protect my life total, but two is like not a problem, so. And play a mountain and a light up. Alright, that, that might have been a mistake then. Light up stage two. Alright, there's an Arc Light off a of Light Up Stage. It's also a Metamorphose. Like, I can actually just cast Arc Light next turn, but another Marshall. Alright, so we'll start with our uh, we'll start with our Snoop here and see what our top card is. Snoop Gob, Aether Vial, of course, right on time. I haven't drawn an Aether Vial yet. Uh, and then we'll just play Marshall. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Alright, so now Metamorphose, Arc Light, three cards in hand. Starting off with the Metamorphose. I'm gonna bolt the Snoop, which is fair. And play a Soul Scar Mage. So the Arc Light's gone forever, which is great. Uh, easy block on that. I think we're gonna block with the. Uh, and they have, they have three prowess creatures now, and I'm drawing a Vile next turn. I think we're just dead, honestly. Like, we just don't have anything. I mean, and our top card's a Vile, which is like the literal worst possible top card. And they have two cards left in hand. They have three threats in play. We have a push. Feels pretty bad. All right, um, play this, name Goblin, play Aether Vial. We're just saying go, I mean, like, 
A lava dart here kind of seals the deal, I feel like. Could like attempt the party block on a soul scar mage and then just like kill it if things go really wrong. We take a lot of damage if that happens though. Party block. We have lava dart. Uh, unholy heat. Okay, so that's like for the moment fine. Task priority. That wasn't bad. I'm honestly. rather late to mow Monday, but best of luck on the rest of the games. Thanks, on phone. That wasn't bad at all, actually. We traded three tokens for a heat, a soul scar mage, and. Two extra damage. It wasn't bad at all. Now you should draw a spell here, honestly. Just give me a freaking spell. Or an anti hobble. It's fine too, I guess. Alright. Yeah, I mean, sure. Here come the clowns. Like, that was a pretty big sign of weakness last turn, that the only piece of interaction was on un Unholy Heat. So, Spike's hand's got to be pretty bad. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like an Arc Light in hand. Um, should we take two here? Nothing else? All right. Light up stage. Gross. Heat Tarn. Gonna say go. Spell, please. If only you had a uh, companion to put in your hand. I know, right? They gotta make a goblin companion. All right. Be pretty cool. Alright, so definitely have Arc Light Phoenix in hand, but we can kill both prowess creatures, I guess, and just try and find a way. Alright, not gonna cast the heat, so maybe they don't have a Phoenix in their hand. Alright, so Unholy Heat, killing the token, sure. I should probably remove those. Lava Dart. The Lava Dart matchup. Yeah, finally, Drew. You got... You got anything? I got some things. Damn, twenty-five months. Oh, that's a good. That's a good one. How about that one? Whoa! <laughs> I right. was not expecting double push. All right, all right. Back in the game now. You need a ringleader off the top, please. Sandbag that for a while. That felt like that was gonna be the result of me holding that for a long time. So, nope, just tar fire. Got to hold on, folks. Got to hold on. Got to hold on. Got you card. forgot to cast your ringleader, Jim. And hard cast Arc Light Phoenix. We kill it. All right, here we go. Here we go. This is the ringleader. Come on, buddy. Ringleader, matron, something. Wooded foothills. All right, going to uh, going to four here. Another mountain. There's nothing left. Come on, deck. Help me. 
Well, I got a four. I got a four in my vial. That was stupid. I wasn't even paying attention. All right, sure. That was dumb. Uh... <sighs> Come on, just draw a spell, please. I mean, going to one here is like, now we need to beat the Phoenix and also not die. Yeah. Yeah, pretty tough. I have a wooded foothills in my hand. Yeah, floated out pretty bad there. Top cards, Matron, come on! Oh, man. Lucky me. Rough, rough, rough. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, like, the, the darts definitely line up well against the Snoop combo deck, too. But that's okay. I mean, that game, like... The, the push thing was interesting is, like, I just figured I would hold it and a turn like that would probably happen eventually where you commit. And, like, the turn where I quad blocked and you only had the one piece of interaction. I was like, I, if you played more than one, I was just going to kill the thing that was uh, being blocked so I wouldn't lose all my goblins. So, like, when mm -hmm. you only had the one, I was like, oh, wow, like, we have a chance here, you know. But, uh... Yeah, I totally read you as just having Lance in your hands, so I was the one to commit there. That was a that was a cool game. I think it was good for you to hold the pushes. I I could have cast a, a phoenix the turn I went in on the the darts. Oh really? Yeah. I, I felt like you had a phoenix too in your hand because like you had yeah. like two cards floating for a while and this is what else? Yeah, I do. did. I you did. were stuck on three three lands for a mm -hmm. while too. So, all right, yeah. let's fire up game three. We always play all three matches here for posterity and uh, fire up our remaining okay. decks. Sounds good. And uh, see if I can get on the board here and not get swept. No no sweeps on Mog Monday. No way. All right. Oh. Fire okay, up. best of luck to you. Yeah, so to, I, a little little tough matchup there, wise a little bit, but having to play against the graveyard, or the kind of sacrifice the graveyard deck against the Woodwalker deck, and then the, the combo deck against the uh, the Lava Dart deck. But we're going to win this last one, though. We're going to get it, folks. All right? We don't get swept here on Mog Monday. We don't get swept here on Mog Monday. All right, so I am on the play. And let's go. Let's see what Spike's third brew is. Another Luris deck. All right, so I mean, I think it's a little sketch, honestly. We're on the play. I guess we're gonna keep shrink a spikes cam off here. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. Sucks is like it's a little softer removal spell, but it's good against it's good against a discard spell, I think. I mean not if they take they take matron, but I don't know. Get stamping ground. Obviously you can just draw any land or any card that costs two or less. Which is fine too, so Scalding Tarn. Monkey. Monkey again. That's, that's not bad. We have the ugh, that's a terrible draw. All right, so we've now drawn like basically every four drop in our deck. It's, it's pretty bad. All right, well, get Matron. We'll get a. Uh, we're gonna get an expert here. Pretty sure. Uh, yeah, let's get expert. All right, so they have a uh, they have a removal spell here for Matron. We're like. Down a card from Ragged Band if it hits, but up a card because they used the spell on Matron to kill it. So there are more Lava Darts available, which isn't super likely here, I don't think. Dragon Rage Channeler, sure. Alright, this is great for us. Because now I get to kill a Channeler, and the, the monkey's, like, worthless now, so... We didn't draw a land, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. I guess if they had killed the, the Noble, the Noble that also would have been tough, but, like, if they had the kill spell, they would have killed this, or killed this on one turn one, probably, so... We're just going to kill this right now. Um, I'm just going to wait. Just going to say go. They crack fetch. We kill this in response. They can't surveil. It's that and that and that. So do this. Waiting is a mistake, says chat, as they crack their fetch like I thought they were going to, and then you don't get to surveil. So, they get a land here tap, which is fine. If they could have cast a spell, that's also fine. So, Watery Grave, interesting. I think this is just like a blue-red deck. I think I recall seeing Spike post about this deck. 
It's like a blue-red deck just playing Lurus, which is like, this is the deck where I tweeted about where I was really mad. Ugh. Because, like, the blue-red deck is playing Lurus, which is just, like, disgusting. Right, so they're going to steal my my Exalted. Son of a... All right. It's pretty annoying, but sure. Now we're at huge trouble. I don't have any lands, so... All right. Pretty gross. I Seriously, you know, I, I'm, I'm sensing a lot of Goblin Envy here, you know? It's just the coolest deck in the format. What can I say? All right, so another Hierarch. No lands, though. Uh, it's a tough one. This is a tough one. We don't draw land here. They, they, they deal with this, this Hierarch. We just have all of our four drops in our hand. No Vile, no lands. Sprite Dragon. And Lurus to hand. That could have been worse. That definitely could have been worse. All right. Um, is there a land here? No, never. That's actually like not the worst. Um, now they get to Lurus and recast Monkey or Channeler or Sprite Dragon. So if we kill the Hierarch, they can't play Lurus unless they have a fetch land, which is like pretty likely. So I think killing the Hierarch is not correct at all. Um, we have Crater Maker and Expert, which can both kill Sprite Dragon or Lurus. They know we have none of these. Oh man, drawing land is tough. Also, once the dragon gets big enough, uh, we can't do it anyway. So I guess we could just like kill dragon. They play Lurus, recast dragon. We kill Lurus. And then um, I guess just deal with the dragon later. Like I, I, we're just like so stuck on lands this game. I'm not sure what to do. Like... All right, I'll just kill the dragon. So their turn is going to be Lurus, recast dragon. We untap and kill Lurus. Nope, going to dash a monkey. Oh, the monkey. The monkey. I'm sick of the monkey. All right, please miss. Never misses. Never misses in a million years. Hmm. So gonna play Lurus here? No. Are they Warchief here? No. That's the fetch too, sure. Yeah, that's pretty good. Channeler, dash back to hand. So we draw. You draw a land. I mean, it's, I mean, a sort of a land. Play this. Kill Lurus. All right. So four cards in hand. Dash monkey again. That's interesting. It's like obviously, this is like a pretty good block for us. This Three cards left. Graveyard uh, three whoops. cards. Three card types. Huh. Cavern of Souls, no. Okay. Um I think there's Cryptic Command in this deck. But two cards left? Yeah, just totally brain farted. I felt like you just had the Hyrax back. I feel like I thought Munitions Expert was just a Terminate, but it leaves a 1-1 one, one back. Yeah, it's broken. Not only a 1-1, one, one, a Goblin 1-1. One, one. Crazy. All right. Uh, so, yeah, definitely feeling a Cryptic Command here. I think Cranko's our worst card. I'm just going to chip that one off. No nope, resolves. I mean, obviously, it dies to Bolt and stuff, too, but... Might just be out here, honestly. Just out of stuff to do? No. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, yeah, we just happened to draw all of our four drops, which is kind of annoying, but, all right, so, Iteration was a pretty good, pretty good hit there. It's a spell for Channeler. They keep the card on top, and now it's got Flying, Seer Visions, sure. And the card... The Visions was the card that was exiled, revealed with Iteration, right? 
Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. All right, thank you. Yeah, I just missed it. Okay, so then now they've drawn a card. They're casting visions. Um, I mean, they go bottom top. Obviously, have to kill this Krenko, or things are gonna get a little dirty. They need to kill Krenko or answer a Sling Gang. I mean, like we're we're playing one spell a turn. Also, all we have is four drops in our hand. If any counter spells, we're just dead. But, like we just don't have anything that costs us some four, unfortunately. Pashik Mons? Yeah, I think we're just gonna cast Ring Leader, get a countered, and die here. Um, I mean, I mean, cast Sling Gang, but what are you gonna do? Yeah. Actual counter spell, it's fine. Two cards left. So we're dead to like a bolt here. Um, I guess we just pop Cranko. All right, I mean, as long as we don't die or get to untap, uh, we draw Cavern of Souls, Lightning Bolt, sure. All right, I have a tough game. Just like have a bunch of four drops in our hand. Miss lands too many turns. <laughs> there's your Aether Vial. Oh, there's Cavern Souls too. Ugh. Killing me here. Just killing me. All right. Um. So like Sprite Dragon Luris stuff. Pushes are in. Are the relics in again? I mean, we're, we're grinding, so I think so. And Cranko's pretty bad. Bringing in a lot of non-goblins, though, which I'm not, like, thrilled about. Let me bring in Tarfire. So, Relic Handles what? I guess I just channel her. Actually, I don't, I don't want these. Never mind. There's no Arc Lights. Don't like that. Um... Take out these. Do I want Fury? I don't think so. Just like blue reds, so they have like Channeler, maybe some prowess creatures, Sprite Dragon, and Lurus, I guess. Yeah, I don't really like that. Pile Driver, Crater Maker. I like having a Prospector of a deck. Yeah, most of these need to like draw lands i think we were stuck on two for quite a while there this crater maker can go let's fire it up like we're the control deck here like this the, our this version of a deck is like is kind of like controlly it has like the actual card draw like the last version is more combo heavy so we can just play a grindy game or should be able to um Uh, yeah, it's good. I'll keep this. Leave a push. Leave a push. Play a little Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. I mean, War Chief Sling Gang is certainly fine. We have a way to kill Sprite Dragon. Explosives on zero. Do the right thing, Jim. Pay the echo. That is... Yeah, that's... Man. Um, I think you might have sold me. If it wasn't sold already. Yeah, we're gonna pay echo here. Like, I, I wouldn't have. But this is a pretty wild, like make me pay echo play but sure explosives on zero all right double war chief sling gang what is going on here all right i mean attack I guess we're playing sling gang I'd rather them not draw two cards or Archmage's Charm, so. Sure. And uh, second thing again, we're gonna be a little more careful with. Iteration, sure. 
Might be nice for Cavernous Souls too, you know. So a lightning bolt was... Wait, what? A lightning bolt was exiled and not cast? Sure. I mean... Okay. Aether Vial? Sure. So we'll buy out the Aether Vial here. And then they counted us with a Warchief. Definitely has Counterspell. Not even close. Alright, and then we'll attack for... Uh, attack for a two ball. Like, no way you don't play Lightning Bolt there unless you want to keep two mana up, so. Just there you go. Just chipping away here. Huh. Yeah, I mean... Freaking Mog Warmark is going to go coast to coast here. I should have cast second bile, probably. Whatever. And step Snapcaster Mage, Arc Mage's Charm. It's pretty good. Gonna gain control my vial on one. Sure. Sure, that's fine. I mean, like, we just have another vial. Five cards in hand. Iteration again. Mishra's Bobble reveal, pretty good. Canal, Bobble, four cards in hand. Look at the top card. Definitely supposed counter magic up. I mean, now our Marshall can't attack anymore because I'll just block and pop the, uh, the explosive, which is kind of awkward. We could just push the Snapcaster Mage. Like, feels bad because they have like better threats in their deck, but we kind of want to just go across the finish line here because things are just getting worse now because they have counter magic up. I'm going to do that. I feel good, but... So, vial to one. Draw Prospector. Adorable. I'm just say go. I mean, like, now Prospector and comes an end step. We're not allowing them to cast a... Unholy Heat, sure. Not allowing them to cast a uh, counter spell, but the explosive, sure. Vial on three is pretty disgusting. Like, you can put, put Luris in for free. Yeah, it's pretty gross. It's pretty gross. This is how the card was always meant, was meant to be played in design. Just put it, just cast it for three mana. It does make me sick that this is a blue red deck that is playing Luris. I'm I am personally extremely tired of a guard Luris in modern. Yeah, me too, to be honest. Just like Luris in like like Luris is in what, like thirty percent of all the decks, and that's like a wide spread of different decks too. Yeah, the card is very easily one of the best cards in the format. It's funny too that it like it was obviously a lot better when it was first printed, like how much better it was, just like Unreal. Yeah, we're yeah those were some weird days. All right, so we're going to. Uh... I mean, maybe maybe the problem card is Mishra's Bobble. I don't know. Like Luris wouldn't see that much play if it weren't for Bobble. It'd still see play in some decks, but just yeah, the I'd be pretty happy of, with yeah. a, a Bobble ban on that purpose of like, you yeah. know, we want. I think that you know, if if it's a companion once in a while, sure, that's cool, whatever. But the 
the ubiquity of, of Lurus is directly tied to Bobble, like you like you said. And like I think if Bobble's gone, it's a pretty innocent ban. It doesn't really like decimate any deck, but at the same time it just like puts Lurus to like an appropriate power level. Yeah. And Bobble is only gonna get better as time goes on. Bobble yeah, is just absolutely. it's just gonna get better and better. Alright, so like four. I mean we're just we're just so dead here. Um Pile driver. So we're just like trying to get to Sling Gang and like cheese out, I guess. It's just like now Spike's drawing two cards a turn, already has six cards in hand. Like. Alright, we'll just fire up a War Chief here and just soak up a counter spell, I guess. Maybe. Probably doesn't need a counter, honestly. Sure. Let's say go. This deck's really cool. I like this deck a lot. Seems like a really, really well built. Ah, oh, should I have sixth? Should I'm I gonna six? yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna pretend like you tapped that in response. I know. That I, I actually have a two drop too. I, I just I just have six. So I was talking to chat. Um, oh, I think I'm pretty dead. Anyway, I don't think it matters. I'm sure your hand's insane. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Like my, my I have I have a like my 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 shred of hope was a sling gang like mm. cheesing you out, but at the vial, it's not possible. So. Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got some counter. Yeah, that's fine. Unfortunately, my unclaimed territory wasn't a cavern of souls this game, you know? Yeah, that, that probably would have been game winning. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Man, the the, the dirty sweep. That that last, that deck is, I, that deck's really, really cool. I, I like that deck a lot. Yeah, that's that's probably my favorite of all my new brews. I got, I went six and two in the challenge on Saturday with it. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that one. What'd you lose to? Um... I lost to the guy that won the tournament, the Just Guy Stoneblade deck, and then I lost to a Bant Stoneblade deck too. Just like, kind of you know, pretty close matchups where I mulliganed a couple times. Sure, yeah. The the fact that the deck can like be reasonably aggressive with the Sprite Dragons and the Channelers, but also like has a pretty sick late game too, is like wild. And like the Lurus is just so wild in that deck. It's just like so yeah. like you just oh yeah, it's turn six and we're in a grindy game. <laughs> I'll just get Bobble back every turn. You know, it's like it's crazy card to have in like these long counter spell games. Um, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, but the the ability to be aggressive too is really really cool. You have like Sprite Dragon to Clockstron and so on and so forth. So cool. Well, dude, you you beat me on my TV show. How dare you? Oops. You're never coming back here again, ever. <laughs> no, that was, that was definitely a lot of fun. I definitely um, it was definitely. I mean, Modern Horizons two has been like a pretty pretty big moon in the format. Obviously, it's like mm -hmm. a little you know outlier here or there. I mean, what are your thoughts on the card of uh, Urza's Urza Saga? Hmm. I think the card's very good. One of the best cards of the set for sure. I know there's a lot of buzz. Ah, it's too good. It's going to be banned. But I've been playing like a lot of hate cards for it in all my decks. I've been playing Alpine Moon, Shattering Spree, Engineered Explosives, and I've the, like I've beaten like the last six or seven Urza Saga decks I've played. Um, I just haven't lost to it in a while. And you know maybe the card will end up being like Uro, where like Uro could like last for a long time without like obviously dominating the metagame because it's like easy you can hate it out but over time it's like hinders format diversity to have a card like urza saga but urza saga is not hogak levels of broken where um it's it's dominant even when people are playing a ton of hate for it you know like hogak was so dominant with all the, like when people are like main decking for leyline of the voids hogak was still destroying i don't think that's going to be the case with urza saga the card has been really really beatable so far in my testing yeah, it feels like a card to me that, like, it will eventually be broken. Like, when, like, the really correct proper shell is found for it and the flexibility is there, it might become, like, too much of a problem. Like, right now, it's, I, like, I agree with that, yeah. It's floating around. It's doing some cool stuff. It's definitely very, very good. Um, the fact that it has some vulnerabilities is really cool. Like you mentioned, like, mm -hmm. Alpine Moon or Spreading Seas, whatever. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, and, and also, the, card, the card's very good, but it's also a six mana three for one, you know? 
Um, it, it's uncounterable. It's hard to interact with. It's very powerful, but you still have to spin six mana into it. And I, I have found that not even if you're not playing hate cards, like you can sometimes just out aggro the card. Just like yeah, I mean that, that's that's very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's kind of like it's such a weird, bizarre card. It's almost just up mm -hmm. in the air. It's like what is the right thing to do with it? Like, is it like, is it an amulet Titan card? Is it like an affinity card? Is it like a, as Muz, Maza, Muza, whatever mm -hmm. card, you know, like, and like, or it is, is it something else that hasn't been found yet? You know, is it an Urza card, you know? Um, and like, it's been like an always wide variety of decks and look pretty good, but what's, what's like the real optimal spot for it? It's pretty wild. What are your feelings on, uh, on just the, the set overall for modern? Uh, I really, really, really like it. Um, like with the possible exceptions of Urza Saga and Ragavan, I, I don't think I would have changed a single card as printed. I was like so pleasantly surprised with cards that I never even knew I wanted, like Ignoble Hierarch and Pure Recruiter. These cards are super exciting to me. Um, I, I think they knocked it out of the park. The, the formats felt really fun and open and diverse. And, you know, that might change as, you know, decks get hammered out. And, you know, one, one thing too is, the old police of modern, like Blue Red Prowess and, and Heliod, I think both of those decks are still very good and nobody's playing them because they want to play with the new cards. Right. And so it's it's going to be really difficult to evaluate what a metagame would look like without those decks being back in the format. So I think in the next few weeks, they'll come back and then we'll kind of see how things shape up. Yeah, it's a little weird because the, the incentives on Magic Online for playing leagues are just like, I'm gonna brew a cool deck and have fun. You know, there isn't really like a big tournament or like a major, major event. There, are, I guess there are like the the challenges on on Magic Online, but those aren't like super, you know. And then I don't even know what kind of mock stuff there is. I don't even know what that is like anymore. But there aren't like big major events. There isn't like some incentive to like just literally find the best possible deck, break it. Doesn't matter if it's some like boggles or whatever. Just play your freaking deck and win. So um, no SG Tour events, things like that. So. It's interesting seeing how things definitely evolve like a little more slowly, but they are kind of evolving. And if they are evolving, it's a little bit like behind the scenes also. You know, maybe it's just one list among a hundred in the in the Magic Online deck dump that might be broken, but there isn't really like a big result for it. So it's been kind of wild. But yeah, I, I agree. The set is, is, is definitely really, really cool. I really, really like these like these spreads of new cards coming to the format where it's like really fun old cards like Goblin Bombardment and like Patriarch's Bidding and like Upheaval and like is Upheaval gonna see play? Maybe not, but it's just like this really cool card to have around, you know, and like it's a cool fun build around being able to sort of like, like carry and feeder in the last one, you know, carry and feeder is like the perfect card for modern. It's never going to be broken. Yeah. It's a really cool synergy card. It, it really incentivizes a lot of fun things. I think that it, it did a good job of this, this modern horizons of making sure of it. Like a lot of the cards they were adding were synergy cards, cards that, you know, they might fit into a certain deck, but they're not just like Ren and Six or like, you know, Plague Engineer. Like there's really, really ubiquitously powerful cards. So I agree. I'm excited too. I think these kind of releases are really, really fun. Cool. So, well, well great. thanks so much for coming on and beating me on my TV show. I appreciate it. Um, definitely was a lot of fun. Definitely uh, fun seeing a different brews, fun doing kind of an all modern one was a little bit different. And uh, of course, why don't you give a little, uh, a little spiel as far. Congrats on getting your gig at Channel Fireball. That's awesome. And um, let everyone know where they can find you, um, Eternal Fireball, Twitch, YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash Aspiring Spike, uh, over at YouTube and Twitter, also at Aspiring Spike. And then I'm writing articles for CFB Pro and making YouTube videos for them too. That's awesome. Very, very happy to see you get picked up by one of the bigger uh, bigger sites. It's great. Super, super, super cool to see. Awesome. Well, Spike, thanks so much for coming on. Are you going to stay on stream uh, after this? Yeah, I am. I'm going to stream for a few more hours. Awesome. So I'll fire off a little host. So definitely, um, all the YouTube folks, you check out, check out Spike on YouTube. And uh, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me, Jim. All right. And if you want to see Spike's decks, you can hop on over to Spike's channel. Or uh, Spike also tweeted them uh, on his Twitter. Uh, all the deck lists, for sure. I'll be checking out the uh, the decks as well. The uh, That uh, a blue-red deck is really, really cool. I might actually play that blue-red deck for like... Uh, for a, a cool stuff video at some point too. So we got beaten. Um, definitely um, Spike's great. Dex are great. I think the matchups lined up a little bit, you know, and not in our favor. I mean, the Voidwalker was really good against our Graveyardy deck and then the Lava Darts are good against our combo deck and so on and so forth. Uh, we just got clowned in that last match. I can't even, I can't even say anything, you know, but um, yeah, definitely super cool. Again, I'll probably be playing Spike's blue red deck at some point, uh, either on stream or in a cool stuff video. Cause it's really, really cool. But big thanks Spike for coming on. I gotta get vengeance next next month. Again, next month um, we're looking at. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna tell you who we're playing next month. I'll have to issue a challenge later at some point. So thanks so much for tuning in, folks. We really appreciate it. This is Mog Monday Showdown. 
Ice, thanks for reset. Appreciate that Monday, which is your most important month. Anyone you want to see on a Mog Monday showdown, please let me, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the uh, in the Twitch chat. Uh, YouTube folks, like, comment, subscribe. I love you all. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, Mog Monday, back next Monday with the regular regular schedule of Mog Monday. And of course, the first Monday of the month is the Mog Monday showdown. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I appreciate it. I will see you next time. YouTube folks, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe. You are all great. Thanks for watching.